I have been playing rise of kingdoms since October 25th, 2018. That is 1,685 days. And I'm still 12 legendary commander sculptures away from expertising Julius Caesar. One of the first legendary commanders that has been in the game since day one. And I'm still not finished with expertising him but I was wondering ever since he got his upgraded relic is he actually sort of good now I've been thinking about this a lot especially because I'm about to expertise him soon probably within the next month two months depending on you know depending on my RNG but the upgrade to his relic here is 20 percent all damage and 20 percent March speed now this uh, uh, for face value is insane 20 percent all damage applies at the very end of the damage calculation so this is a multiplier an amplifier if you will of all the damage that you're doing so that's nuts but also march speed is more important now than ever especially for infantry commanders because they're just so slow in the open field so i was wondering not only for just infantry but just in general can i find a really good usable pair for julius caesar now of course this means he's going to be a secondary commander but that's fine because he's a free to play legendary commander and by that i mean you unlock him for free you're going to get sculptures of him for free over time just by playing the game and honestly his expertise is only okay i mean it gives him 400 damage factor on that active skill so it's not nothing it's a small damage factor but it's nice however the buff here for five seconds doesn't change at all it's 30 percent increased damage 20 percent increased attack 20 percent increased defense for five seconds that is the same whether he's expertise or not so if you have a 5511 julius caesar you still have a really powerful active skill buff on top of the fact that you can get access to the relic for free and get 20 percent all damage and 20 percent march speed so is julius caesar with his relic actually good as a secondary and that's what i've been thinking so i brought julius caesar into into everybody's favorite battle simulator now i know that chisco made a video about julius caesar a few weeks ago i don't know if it was a month ago something like that he did some testing in arc Cyrus, and he found that you could use cpo primary with julius caesar secondary and it was relatively okay i think it performed decently for his expectations and understanding that this is a super old legendary but he didn't really test that many pairs with Julius Caesar he mainly landed on CPO and and that makes sense and we're going to talk about that here in this video but I wanted to try a bunch of different combinations and that's why this tool right here is super cool so I'm going to link the rock battle simulators discord down below like I've done in previous videos I'm not sponsored by them I just really like the the software and the developer is super nice and super responsive so the commander that I was most interested in testing with Julius Caesar was actually Zhang Yu and this is a commander that I I do not have any investment in he's got his first skill at four just because I've gotten him from like random 10 spins of wheels or something like that I don't know but I obviously I'm not gonna dump a bunch of legendaries into Zhang Yu just to test him and that's why this simulator is so cool but the reason that I want to use Zhang Yu with Julius Caesar is because of the rage requirement right rage requirement can I say that the cool thing about Zhang Yu is that his rage requirement is actually only 900 but beyond that on his fourth skill and this is at five it brings it down to to 850 which means Zhang Yu can pop off his active skill super super fast which also means that the secondary commander in this case would be Julius Caesar he can pop off his active skill very fast which gives you the 30 percent damage bonus the 40 percent of stats which is super nice but also if you use the full skill tree talent build as well as adding like a horn of fury in your accessory slots over here uh this is going to give you so much rage that you can more or less have the secondary commander's active skill pop off once every five or six seconds which means that for somebody like julius caesar who has a five second buff that means that he's more or less always going to have 30 percent bonus damage and 20 percent attack and defense and that's on top of the fact that he already has the 20 percent all damage on his relic and the 20 percent march speed so we're talking about a zhang yu caesar with 50 percent all damage at all times 
that's insane plus the march speed on Zangyu is already really nice he's cavalry commander so in my mind I'm thinking this might be a secret way of popping off with Julius Caesar and so I was really excited to test it so why I'm gonna stop rambling let's go and take a look at the test results I almost forgot what's going on guys cheers now in this video we're gonna take a look at almost 50 battle reports and it took over an hour and a half of different testing and also another hour and a half to identify a bug in the testing program so I spent a lot of time making this video so if you could drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out a ton and consider subscribing while you're down there for more rise of kingdoms content in the future okay so as you can see here uh, we're using a zhang Yu with julius caesar and it, there's no there's no getting around it we, we see the defeat here okay now let me paint you guys a little bit of a picture here okay uh, julius caesar has a fourth skill which gives him 15 percent more troop capacity and you're not going to see that written on the battle report but i can assure you in the simulator you can see in the top left it says 210 but as soon as you hit start it changes it to 240 okay Okay, so it actually is taking into account the fourth skill on Julius Caesar it just doesn't show that in the actual battle report I, I I don't know why I think it just pulls the number that you type in here honestly so just remember that despite it showing the same number of troops we are actually using the correct number of troops for the army okay now you can see that I put it up against a Nevsky Joan okay this is my favorite pair to test other pairs up against because Nevsky Joan performs as one of the best open field marches in the game so this is kind of where I start my testing because if it can do well against Nevsky Joan then it's interesting to me okay so as you can see here Nevsky Joan has 55k remaining and that's impressive because we started with 30,000 more troops over here so even uh even with the extra troops we're getting destroyed boys we are getting destroyed let's move on to the next battle report here and it's more or less the same thing in fact it's even worse we have 60k remaining for the Nevsky and Joan and then we go on to the third battle report and there's 43k left for the Nevsky Joan so in all three of these reports Zhang Yu Caesar gets absolutely obliterated okay now in these testings I did no crystal tech no all damage no runes there's no talents on any of the equipment it does have all iconics and we're using the ottoman empire with a five percent skill damage skin now that you know obviously is more important for nevsky joan than it is for zangu caesar because caesar's skill damage is very little but it's basically an even playing field across the board here okay so you guys can trust that that is the case now i moved on here i wanted to see okay can it beat Nevsky William because Nevsky William is kind of just like it's similar to Joan but it's a little bit weaker and it couldn't okay it was closer 24k left but it couldn't do it so I was like okay so then I was like okay let's move on to something else and here you can actually see the uh the different you know talent builds that I used and the fact that it's using all the equipment without the talents and all that stuff okay but here we use Zhang Yu Caesar versus Boudicca Artemisia okay and we get a W we get a pretty big W okay we have 58k remaining here which is really nice Boudicca Artemisia is a very common and powerful open field archer combination and of course cavalry beats archers so you would hope at least that this would be the case and in fact it was we did a second test here it beats it again with 30k remaining and we did a third test here where it beats it once again with 51.7k remaining okay so it's consistently defeating Boudicca Artemisia that's good and it's what we might expect because again cavalry beats archers let's move on to Boudicca YSG things start to change okay we see Zhang Yu Caesar loses to Boudicca YSG 22k remaining I test it again it loses again 24k remaining we test it again it loses again almost 50k remaining for the Boudicca YSG Boudicca YSG just too strong man it's just too strong and remember YSG you know this is a duel this is a 1v1 this is not necessarily where YSG shines but the 50% skill damage applying to Boudicca is making a big difference here. And also, YSG is probably going to perform even better in real life than it is in this simulator because he's going to hit five targets, whereas Artemisia is only going to hit three. And it, he's got the 50% skill damage bonus. It's even better. So, if anything, if you learn anything from this video, it's that YSG seems to be significantly better than Artemisia, at least in these 1v1 duels obviously you know if it gets swarmed and things like that there's there's other factors that come into play but in this case Boudicca YSG seems to be stronger than Zhang Yu Caesar so that's kind of disappointing for me okay because YSG is not that tanky and you know cavalry is supposed to counter archers and here we see it's losing consistently to one of the most popular archer pairs so then I decided okay 
it's losing to Budica YSG it's losing to Nevsky Joan it's losing to Nevsky William the only thing that's consistently beaten is Budica Artemisia so maybe Zhang Yu isn't the play like maybe my hypothesis was wrong about Zhang Yu maybe we should move on to testing other commanders so I moved over to Guan Yu Caesar okay I thought Guan Yu is a very common and popular open field infantry commander uh, a lot of people are trying to find new pairs for him as CPO finds alternatives a lot of players are using Sargon with CPO they're using CPO with Mehmed they're using CPO with Tarek right there's a lot of great options for CPO and so people are trying to figure out what they want to do with their Guan maybe Caesar is a good play here and also I figured because this is infantry it's going to counter the cavalry here and that wasn't the case we got uh 28k left for the Nevsky Joan we tested again 47k left for Nevsky Joan and then I gave up I was like okay Guan Guan is not doing it here okay he's not doing it uh I, he should literally be countering this and he's not able to do it so I tested Joan with Caesar okay that was what I was testing here as just a fun little test all right Caesar brings a little bit of tankiness on his second skill but he also brings a lot of troops for the active skill of Joan of Arc to pop off that skill damage and 50 percent all damage is crazy for Joan of Arc even though it won't be up all the time like it is for Zhang Yu it'll be up a lot of the time and that's a lot of damage okay so here we see that it actually beats the Boudicca YSG 40k remaining that's a solid beat I test it again it loses 12.8k remaining for the Boudicca YSG I test it again it wins with 30k remaining so there's a pretty big variable here okay it's a going about 50 50. this was a obvious win for Joan this one was a slight win for Boudicca this one was an obvious win for Joan so you know you could argue like yeah it's it's uh, Joan is winning right but you would kind of expect that to be the case and the fact that it lost once is like it, that's to me an underperformance right because again this is cavalry it should be countering and it's it's like sometimes it's losing really sometimes it's gonna lose that's not very good okay so I, I gave up on the Joan if it can't really consistently counter what it's supposed to it's probably not going to hold up against other things. So I moved on to Nevsky. I thought, okay, Nevsky, sure, surely Nevsky will be better because Nevsky is better at dueling than, than Joan of Arc, right? Uh, and here we see it loses. So now I'm starting to get frustrated, right? And you might be thinking like, why did I even click on this video? But trust me, we're going to get to it. Okay. Nevsky Caesar loses 32K remaining for the Nevsky Joan. We test it again. Nevsky Joan wins again with 21K left. We test it again. It's 0-3 for the Nevsky Caesar okay gets completely knocked out in everything every single round so then I thought okay let's test out the CPO primary with Caesar secondary I saw Chiskel tested it in his video maybe we can test it against a bunch of different things and see if it's actually good or if it was just like kind of good for some of those test results okay so here we test Scipio Caesar against Guan Yu CPO and it wins 45k remaining for the CPO Caesar that's impressive here we tested again 71k left for the CPO Caesar guys this is nuts because Guan CPO is one of the most powerful infantry combinations in the game right now and it's defeating it very very easily interesting all right let's test it against some other things we have CPO Caesar versus Attila Nevsky and it destroys it 104k left oh my goodness we see a second report 80k remaining that's nuts that's an easy win that's an easy beat no question about it and it should I mean this literally counters Attila Nevsky. it's infantry it should be winning but it's also Julius Caesar that we've seen lose in pretty much every other pairing in this video except for against Boudicca Artemisia right so okay we, we finally have a couple things that are winning next we test it against Boudicca YSG and it loses in by an insane amount okay 105k left that's a huge loss I think I only tested this once because I mean it's it should be countered it is countered there's no question here I mean this was such an obvious win that it you know it's not like it varied by 30k like oh, over 100k that's a big win next we tested Scipio Caesar versus Guan Sargon okay Guan Sargon is a pair that I use I find this a very good pair uh and Sargon's pretty good in 1v1s especially in a scenario like the simulator where it is you're always connected and you're always dealing damage that's like the best case scenario for Sargon okay this simulator is very generous for Sargon and he puts out a lot of damage with his active skill if you stay connected like the simulator suggests and he's still losing that's crazy Guan Sargon losing 64k left for CPO Caesar we tested again lost again Caesar wins 
68.6k remaining we test it again it wins again 78.8k remaining versus the guan sargon that is crazy okay that is crazy and again you might be saying well caesar's a great like 1v1 commander so is sargon right so th there's really th there's no question here right now of course you could say yes yeah, cpo is better than guan that's totally fine but i would suggest that sargon's better than caesar right so it should balance out but here i mean it, it's it's kind of nuts let's move on to the next thing we did more tests against the guan cpo to see if there's any outliers and nope cpo caesar beats guan cpo again 55k remaining here we do a cpo caesar versus nevsky joan and it wins okay that's pretty cool so 38k left for the cpo caesar and again it should win because it counters cavalry we test it again it's a small win but it is a win we test it again it's a third victory that's huge three and oh 43k left for the Scipio Caesar that's nuts okay remember Nevsky Joan is uh the premium open field March right now and Scipio has active has a uh, March speed and Caesar gives him 20 percent more March speed this is going to be a pretty fast infantry combination guys like this is this is starting to shape up to be something really interesting let's move on again we go against the Nevsky Minamoto now this is a good dueling combination and you see that it loses 21k left in the Nevsky Minamoto that's a it's a win but it's a relatively small win okay we move on again Nevsky Minamoto wins again 44k remaining and we test it again and here we see Scipio Caesar actually wins 47k so it looks like there's a lot of variation here obviously with Minamoto's active skill sometimes he deals more extra damage and all, things like that there's a lot of variables and this was a little disappointing to be honest with you right because again Scipio should be countering Nevsky because this is cavalry right um but again these are like two very good 1v1 commanders versus an AoE and a 1v1 commander so here I ran the test for a fourth time and we see Scipio Caesar actually wins again 27k left so it's I mean it's literally 50 50 right I mean this one by 44k this one by 47k this one by 21k this one by 27k like it's a it's a toss-up right so I don't know what's going on with this with this pair there's a lot of variation here but continued on the testing I did CPO Caesar versus Sargon CPO and we see the loss for the Caesar 29k left on the Sargon CPO uh we move on again we test it again 43k left for the Sargon CPO we test it one more time 57k left for the Sargon CPO so clearly Sargon CPO is doing something right next we test it against Scipio Honda Scipio Honda wins with 40k left we test it again Scipio Honda wins again with 26k left and we test it a third time Honda wins again with 56k left next we test it against Scipio Mehmed only 5k I'm gonna say this is a tie basically boys next we see we test it again Caesar wins with 43k left a lot of variable there uh, a third time we see that Caesar wins with 16k left that's crazy so of these three it was basically a tie and two wins for Caesar against Mehmed guys Scipio Mehmed is a really popular open field pair and let me just say that obviously this is a double AoE combination right uh so this is going to pump out a ton of AoE skill damage in the open field and that's not represented here in this simulation okay so let me just be abundantly clear about that this will perform better than it does on paper because of that AoE. But guys, remember really quick, March speed. There's no March speed on Mehmed. There's 20% March speed on Caesar. So, I mean, you're trading off the AoE for being able to actually be somewhat mobile in the open field, which is really rare for infantry. And I think a lot of players maybe aren't a lot of especially newer players or more amateur players aren't going to understand how important the march speed on caesar actually is right like you might want to just go blindly all in on damage and that that makes sense but the march speed on caesar is sometimes something that you're going to want over the damage factor on Mehmed. it's it's just the case now is that commonly going to be the thing probably not probably not but in things like Ark of Osiris surely you would want more March speed right I mean that would be nuts especially if these are performing very similar on these test results okay minus the fact that there's no AoE let's move on to Caesar versus Tarek okay Scipio Caesar versus Scipio Tarek we see the Tarek wins with 11k left on the next test we see this is basically a tie we'll call this a tie on the third test we see that this Caesar wins with 16k left so here we see Caesar a dueling commander versus Tarek a dueling commander uh and they're performing about the same that's disgusting that's actually crazy here especially considering they're both using the same primary with the same equipment the same civilization the same talents everything here is the same except for the secondary we see Caesar performing just as good as 
Tarek or Tariq. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but you also have the March speed on Caesar, right? So this is actually going to be a faster March than the one with Tariq, right? Next, we move on to the Scipio Caesar versus Dugaliang Nebuchadnezzar. And we see that the Dugaliang actually wins with 12K left. We test it again. It's a tie. This is a tie. 1K left. That's a tie. We move on once again to the Jugaliang Nebu winning with almost 40k left, 39k left here. So again, the Caesar is losing, and this makes sense because archers counter infantry. So okay, but I mean, I mean, like these two weren't that far. These weren't that far, and you gotta remember, Jugaliang is like an S S S S S tier commander. Like he's actually insane, and Nebu is pretty good. Now again, there's AOE here, so of the pairs, like this is obviously better right it's obviously better in practice totally a better pair so okay what did we learn from all of this testing um uh, we learned that first of all you really can't use it with xy uh you really can't use it with zhang Yu. i thought that that might be a thing okay it might be a fun little tech a fun little uh thing that you could play around with it's not zhang Yu is is not a great pairing okay we also tried it with joan it was okay but it wasn't great we tried it with nevsky it wasn't great we tried it with guan Yu. it wasn't great really the only thing that we could make work was a scipio primary with caesar secondary and that kind of sucks but it's also good news for free-to-play players who don't have anything else now I know that that sounds like kind of crazy but hear me out here okay you saw it perform similarly to the Guan Sargon okay which that's an expensive pair that's an expensive pair you have to invest in both of those wheels of fortune for CPO you only have to get CPO and then you just slap your free to play uh, Caesar behind him that's if that's performing as good as Guan Sargon that's pretty crazy we also saw CPO Caesar performing about as well as CPO Tariq and that's also insane if you were considering expertising or even getting a 5515 Tariq like I have here Tarek sorry if I'm mispronouncing that if you were considering doing that for infantry then maybe you could actually consider using your Caesar okay that's something you could do and you would have to weigh in your mind how much are the legendary commander sculptures worth for Tarek versus the the museum uh, currency that you would have to spend for your caesar right because i i want to be very clear about this this currency up here uh is hard to come by okay especially as a free-to-play player so this is very it's you want to spend this wisely right but if you've already maxed out a lot of the stuff that you care about and you have extra coin laying around maybe you just slap it on caesar upgrade it and you know you can use that as a relatively cheap cpo combination i think that would be really solid so what does this mean for you well if you're an infantry main okay uh, and you want to split up your Guan and Scipio, but you only have like, let's say Sargon, right? You could do Guan Sargon and then Scipio with Caesar. And you then now have two infantry pairs. Besides that, there's really no reason to go for Caesar. That's the truth. That's what sucks. Okay. And that's what I wanted to learn from this video. And now we know pretty much for sure that unless you're an infantry main who really just entered season of conquest they need something to slap behind their their cpo or again maybe you're in uh, arc of osiris where you need the march speed on caesar you need to be able to get places quickly with your cpo uh and still use cpo with his active skill and all the great things that he does that could be a great combination as well but outside of uh, you know a, a brand new player to season of conquest who focuses on infantry besides that caesar's not worth it right he's not worth it with the Zhang Yu he's not worth it with cavalry commanders I didn't test him with like Juga Liang or anything like that I think Juga Liang he, he's kind of beating everything right now so it's unfair to pair those together maybe I could do that in another video I don't know but what we found is for most players that 20 percent all damage is it's an illusion it's a pipe dream it it looks great on paper you think it's incredible uh but really there's only a few niche specific examples with CPO that you can really make this work and if that fall if that's you then this video is for you great news i here's a great way that you can actually make use of your julius caesar and season of conquest uh, but for those of you who already have a great pair for your cpo or you're not an infantry main uh you can save what you have as far as your relic currency you could skip julius caesar you don't have to worry about it yes all damage is insane but in most cases it's going to lose 
even in the scenarios of the simulator which are very much in favor of commanders like caesar right this is the best case scenario for caesar uh and he's still not performing super well here so hopefully that clears it up for you guys um for some of you that this may apply to you now may have a good new way to use your caesar with your cpo uh for those of you who are not infantry mains you can now rest soundly knowing that you never need to invest in the in the caesar relic uh you don't have to think about that 20 percent all damage is it good with x is it good with y it's probably not so now we know guys with that being said if you enjoyed this video drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it while you're down there tell me what you think about caesar have you found uses for him maybe in the early game do you think that they should give him a third relic upgrade maybe 30 percent all damage will make him usable i don't know but it seems crazy to me that even with such a powerful relic he's still not very good also consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace